What's going on guys, it's Dario here, and today we're going to talk about if statements in JavaScript. Now before I continue on, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below, so you don't miss out on any content. Just imagine that you're working on a script, and based on the input of a user, you want to print out a specific piece of text. Think about the login system. If you forget to enter the email or the username, an error message will be printed out on the screen, right? But a different error message will be printed out if either the username or password are wrong. This is where a conditional statement comes in clutch. It is an awesome feature that you will be using a lot. And I cannot even express how important an if statement is. The output of an if statement can be either true or false. And based on the output of the condition, you could print out a specific message on the screen. What I would like to do right now is to start off very simple. Let's create a let bool and let's set it equal to true. So we're creating a boolean called bool and the value is equal to true. What we could do right here is to create an if statement by simply writing down if space followed by a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we need to write down the condition. So what we basically want to check. In our case, let's write down bool because that's what we created right here. Before I continue on, it really doesn't matter if you add a space right after the keyword if or not. The output will always be the same. I just think it looks cleaner if you add a space. So outside of our parentheses, let's hit space again. And what we need to do right here is to add the opening and closing curly braces. So let's do that and let's hit enter. And this is the right format that you need to create an if statement. If we save it, you can see that nothing is happening. And the reason why is because we need to specify what needs to happen if the boolean is equal to true. And in our case, it is equal to true because, well, that's obviously what we have set it to. So inside the curly braces, we need to perform or print out something if the condition is met. And I want to keep it very simple right now. So let's create a console.log. And let's add a string, so double quotes. And let's say this statement is true. Let's save it. And you can see that this statement is true has been printed out on the screen. But if we change our Boolean value to false, save it, you can see that the console log that we created has been deleted. And the reason why this is happening is that because we're only specifying that we want to do something if the condition is met. And right now it isn't. This is where you could use the else statement. And the else statement will happen if the output of the if statement is not true. And in order to specify the else statement, we need to go right after the closing curly braces, hit space, and once again, and once again, it's optional to hit a space, but I will do it. Let's write down the keyword else, space, opening and closing curly braces. And we don't need to add parentheses just like the if statement because the else will happen no matter what if the output is false. Inside our else statement, we could add a new console.log. And what we want to console log is, well, let's say this statement is false. Save it. And you can see that this statement is false has been printed out on the screen because our Boolean is equal to false. Most of the times when you work with if statements, you will be using some kind of operator. Think about the logical operator, assignment, comparison, and so on. And that's what I would like to do right now. Right below our if statement, let's create a new let called x is equal to 5. Let's create a let y is equal to 10. Right below of our variables, let's create an if statement. And what I want to check inside the condition is to see a variable x is equal to five, and I want variable y to be equal to 10. So we're checking if the left-hand side of the operand and the right-hand side are true. If they are true, I want to console.log, let's say true. Let's save it. And obviously the output is true because variable x is equal to five and y is equal to 10. As you have seen in my comments, we have also something called else if, and this will happen if the if statement is false. 
So let's go right after the closing braces and let's write down else space if. And the else if does have a condition. So we need to add parentheses and we need to close it off early braces. What I want to do right here is to do a check. So I want to see a variable x is equal to five, but instead of adding the two ampersands, so the end, I want to check if one of the two conditions is true. And I want to see if y is equal to six. Let's add a console.log. And what I want to console log is both conditions are true. Let's save it and let's see what will happen. Well, true is still printed out. The reason why this is happening is because the if statement is true. So it will never go down and check the else if. So if we change five to six in the if, save it. Now you can see that both conditions are true are printed out. And that's happening because this statement or this condition is not true. So this will not be printed out. Then it will check in the else if. So variable x is indeed equal to five or y is equal to six. And that's not true. But one of the two conditions is true. So this will be printed out. If we change variable x is double equal to five to eight, save it. None of the two is printed out. What we could do right here is to add an else statement with a console.log of both statements are false. Let's save it. Now what will happen is that it will go over the if statement, which is not true. Then it will check the else if, which is not true. And then there is no else if anymore, so it will just print out the else statement. You also need to remember that there is no limit of the amount of else if statements that you could add. You could add 5, 10, 20, or just one. But you probably might wonder if it is efficient. Well, I don't think it is. And therefore, we can use a switch statement. And I won't go over the details of the switch statement in this video, because I want to dedicate an entire video on a switch statement, because it is something that will be pretty useful. This was it for this video. In the next video, I want to dive into the switch statement. If you do enjoy my videos and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.